what we're going to be going over here is we're going to be comparing the gross margin versus the contribution margin and understand the difference between these two different margins. We'll look at how we calculate these different margins and it's going to be based on a manufacturing operation here. So really what you're looking at when you're calculating, you determine your gross margin versus contribution margin, it's really what you include in your direct on your variable cost that goes into your inventory that you're producing here. So we're going to be tracking these, uh, looking at these two different margins here and how we'd calculate them. We're going to be uh, tracking them through the uh, process, our inventory accounts here, and what would be going into our cost of goods sold versus what is going to be expensed and not included in our cost of goods sold would be period cost or expensed. And then we'll also be looking at it in terms of our income statement here to determine our operating income. All right, so let's start with the gross margin here. Okay, so first off, looking at our flow here, it's going into our inventory for our cost of goods sold here that's going to be expensed against our sales. What we would do here, we would all the factory costs, the direct material, the direct labor, all the overhead, both fixed and variable factory overhead here, that would be our total manufacturing cost that we'd be looking at. And those would be flowing into our inventory work and process account. So what we would do here is we'd take our beginning work and process inventory. Then we'd add to it our total manufacturing costs that we have here. Those are all total, all the total factory costs here. And then we'd be subtracting from it the ending work and process that we have in our work and process account here. And that's going to give us our cost of goods manufactured. So then what we do here for our finished goods, we would have our beginning finished goods. We add to it the cost of goods manufactured and, and add subtract from it in the ending finished goods. And that is going to give us our cost of goods sold here that we're going to expense, our, expense out against the sales that we have for the period. Now, the key is here for the gross margin, what is included, what is not included in our cost of goods sold, which would be our period cost that we'd be expensing them out during the period here that we're looking at would be the all the non-manufacturing costs for selling, admin, selling and administrative costs here. So that's what, diff, that's what we're looking at with the gross margin. Okay, so for our income statement, and I've got it laid out in equation form here. So, and it really when you're talking about gross margin, it's how you're costing out your, what's in, what you're including in your inventory account here. And in gross margin, we're looking at it in terms of absorption costing here. So what we would do here for our income statement, we're gonna take, determine the direct material use. So we take our beginning uh, materials here that we have, add to it any purchase materials for the period, and subtract out any ending materials. So that's going to give you your direct materials that you've used here for the period. And then to determine our manufacturing costs, we're going to take those all those direct materials, add to it the direct labor, and add and to and also the variable and fixed overhead. So all your overhead here, factory overhead. So that is going to give us our total manufacturing costs. So now we can determine our cost of goods manufacturing. Just take those total manufacturing costs, add to it the beginning work and process, subtract out any ending work and process. That's going to give you your cost of goods manufactured. So to determine your cost of goods, so take your cost of goods manufactured, add to it any beginning finished goods, subtract out any ending finished goods, that gives you your cost of goods sold. So this is the key here. Here's your gross margin. This is where you're gonna take the sales that you have for the period here and subtract from it those cost of goods sold. That gives you your gross margin that we're looking at. And then for our operating income here, just take your gross margin. And this is the case here, we're gonna subtract out all those non-manufacturing costs here, selling and administration. I'm lumping them all into selling and administration, but those are all those non-manufacturing costs. Okay, so the key here for this gross margin, look at the GM here I'm showing, that includes all the manufacturing costs, indirect and direct manufacturing costs, uh, labor, material, and all those overheads here. And to determine your operating income, again, you take the gross margin here that you have, and you subtract out it, subtract from it, deduct all the non-manufacturing costs. I've just pointed them out here as selling and administration, but it'd be all those non-manufacturing costs. So operating income, gross margin here, 
you, that you have calculated here and you subtract all those non-manufacturing costs. That gives you your operating income. Okay, so that's our gross margin. All right, so you've seen what's going on with our gross margin here. It includes all the manufacturing costs are included in your gross margin here. And we'll compare that to our contribution margin where it's a bit different here. Okay, so one thing here. The gross margin is a measure of competitiveness here. It's how much a company can charge for its products over and above the cost of acquiring and producing these products here. So that's our gross margin here. All right. So the next thing here, we'll look at our contribution margin. Again, we'll look at our cost flow here uh, for our, our inventory going in through our cost of goods sold versus what gets expensed here that isn't included in our cost of goods sold. Okay, so for our contribution margin, this is the case where we take our variable uh, factory costs or our manufacturing costs, and those would be our direct material, our direct uh, labor here and the variable overhead. We don't include the fixed overhead here for contribution margin. This is just the variable factory overhead or manufacturing costs here. So that's going to be our total variable manufacturing costs. So that flows into our inventory work and process here. Again, we'll just take our beginning work and process, add to it the total variable manufacturing costs here and subtract from it the ending work and process here. So that's going to give us our variable cost of goods manufactured here. And then it would go into our fin inventory of finished goods here. All we take is our beginning finished goods, add to it the variable cost of goods manufactured here, subtract out our ending finished goods, and this is, goes to our cost of goods sold here, what we would expense against our sales here for the period here. Okay, and then what we would, our period costs here, or what would not be included in our cost of goods sold, would be the fixed factory overhead here, plus all the selling and administrative expenses. So in this case here, we, uh, before, for our, our gross margin, we're taking all the non-manufacturing and uh, selling and administrative, all the non-manufacturing costs. For the contribution margin, we're just taking the fixed factory overhead here that's going to be expense. The variable factory overhead here going into the cost of goods. Whereas with the gross margin, all the factory cost here was going into our cost of goods sold. So with the contribution margin, we isolated out. We The fixed factory overhead here wasn't included in our cost of goods sold. All right, so that's really the difference between a contribution margin and gross margin as far as valuating our inventory here. If for a contribution margin, all we had it included was all those variable costs for the total manufa variable manufacturing costs, and it just tracked on through here all those variable costs. Fixed costs weren't included. Okay, so for our income statement, again, uh, direct material used, again, the same beginning material plus the purchase of the material mi for the period here minus your ending materials. That gives you your direct material used or used here. So then our manufacturing cost, you take the direct materials here, add to it the direct labor, but you would add to that only the variable uh, factory overhead here, not the fixed, just the variable portion. That's going to give us our total variable manufacturing cost. So our cost of goods manufactured would be this total variable manufacturing cost plus the beginning work and process minus our ending work and process. That's going to give us our variable cost of goods manufactured. So our cost of goods sold would just be this variable cost of goods manufactured plus our beginning finished goods minus our ending finished goods. That gives us the variable cost of goods manufactured. So here we sit with our manufacturing margin. Now remember here, again, this is the key here. Uh, manufacturing margin here, you, again, you take your sales for the period here and you subtract from it the variable cost of goods sold here. That's going to give you your manufacturing margin. Now remember, with our gross margin, it was their cost of goods sold included all those uh, factory costs here. Whereas with the contribution margin, it was only the variable manufacturing costs. Okay, so that's our manufacturing margin here. So for our contribution margin that we're looking at, that would be the manufacturing margin here that we have. Subtract from it the variable selling and administrative costs here. That gives you your contribution margin. So that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about uh, uh, the, the gross margin versus the contribution margin. With the gross margin here, 
it we had our cost of goods sold included all the uh, manufacturing cost, all the factory costs and overhead here. With the contribution margin, we're just taking our manufacturing margin here, those variable cost of goods sold here from our sales, and we're subtracting out the variable selling and administration costs here for the contribution margin. Okay, that's the variable selling and administration uh, costs here in the contribution margin. But now the operating income, that's just taking our contribution margin here. But now to determine our operating income, we have to uh, subtract our fixed factory overhead here and our fixed sales and administrative expenses here. So that's what we have to do here when we're determining our operating income here. Uh, with the operating income for the gross margin, all we had was the sell all those selling and administrative expenses here from what we had from our gross margin here. But for the operating income here, you take the gross margin, which did, we had to first subtract out the variable selling and administrative expenses here. And then to determine our operating income, well, we already had the variable selling and administrative expenses included here in the, or subtracted or included from our contribution margin here. We had subtracted them out earlier. So now we just have to subtract out that fixed factory overhead here and our fixed sales and administrative expenses to determine our operating income here. All right, so you can see here with the contribution margin, we had to to determine our uh, contribution margin here. We had to determine our operating income, I should say here. Those were the, we, we had to subtract all those fixed costs here for factory and overhead versus the fixed costs here for sell, selling and administrative expenses here. Determine our operating income. All right, so the contribution margin here, looking at it, it includes all the variable costs for manufacturing and non-manufacturing here. And for our operating income here, we had to deduct the fixed cost, both the manufacturing and non-manufacturing. Okay, so that's the difference here between the contribution margin and the uh, gross margin here. Now, for remember those gross margin included all the manufacturing costs here versus the contribution margin includes all the variable manufacturing and non-manufacturing costs here. And then we have to deduct out all those fixed costs here, manufacturing and non-manufacturing. So you could go back and look at the, go through and look at that contrib our gross margin again, how we calculated that. All right, so that's our contribution margin here. And then one last thing here. The contribution margin indicates how much a company's revenues are available to cover the fixed cost. It helps assessing the risk of loss. First, the risk of loss is low when sales are low if the contribution margin is greater than the fixed cost. Now, secondly here, the risk of loss is high when sales are low if the contribution margin is less than the fixed cost. So you can go back and do the arithmetic and try to understand that here. So that's with the contribution margin. Remember, the gross margin just was a measure of the competitiveness and how much the company can charge for its products over and above their cost of acquiring them. But the gross contribution margin here is how much you, you really are covering your fixed cost here. You're looking at your fixed cost here. All right, so that's the basic difference between a gross margin and the contribution margin. And we looked at it in terms of our cost flows and also our income statement.